the shepherd will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Ezekiel 34, 20 and 21 Therefore thus says the Lord God unto them, Behold, I, even I, will judge between the fat cattle and between the lean cattle, or between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you have thrust with side and with shoulder, and pushed all the diseased with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad. I was listening to a Christian TV program, and the minister said he used to attend a group who preached the prosperity gospel. We have already established God wants us to prosper, so there is nothing wrong with that. But the minister said that the one leading the group told him that many times he wanted to tell him to remove his old car from the car park, for they were preaching prosperity, and his car was not reflecting the message of prosperity. When I heard that, my spirit did not bear witness with that. So I asked God, What does your word say? And the Lord said to me, Behold, I will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you have thrust with side and with shoulder, and pushed all the diseased with your horns, till you have scattered them abroad. Unfortunately, today people say, You are anointed when you drive the best car, and when you have a mansion. Some of us would not receive the Apostle Paul today. We would say he is not anointed, because he said, Even unto this present hour we both hunger and thirst, and are naked or poorly clothed, and are buffeted or beaten, and have no certain dwelling place or homeless. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 11 Who among us in our generation will listen to a preacher like Paul, who did not have a $2,000 suit, who sometimes could not even afford to buy his food? Paul testified, I have learnt in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased and know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learnt to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4 verse 11 to 13 So Paul had a period in his life as a minister of the gospel when he was poorly clothed, hungry and homeless because he was an itinerant preacher. But he said God helped him to go through all of them. Your level of spirituality is not determined by your earthly possessions. Your level of success is not determined by the crowds that follow you either, but by you doing the will of God who called you. There came a time in the ministry of Jesus when the crowds and his disciples left him because the teaching became hard. Only twelve were left with him. John 6 verse 53 to 71 And during his passion, all his disciples, including the twelve, forsook Jesus. But Jesus was still the same, even when all forsook him. Yes, crowds will come and earthly possessions, but they do not commend us to God. Sometimes in some churches, fat sheep, by which is meant wealthy and rich believers, highly educated believers and believers superior in earthly and religious authority, scatter the lean sheep abroad. They cause the lean sheep to leave the church or to stop exercising their gift and ministry in church. The fat sheep thrust them with side and shoulder and push them with their horn. Today, in churches, some people are appointed elders or deacons because of their paycheck, not because of how spiritual they are. The horn of their financial power has pushed the brother or sister, who is rightfully qualified according to the criteria of choosing an elder and a deacon given by Paul to Titus and Timothy. I have heard messages behind pulpits saying, only listen to the prosperity message of people who have prospered financially. But the same people use the scriptures of Paul for prosperity. Paul said in all things he approved himself as a minister of God, as poor, yet making many rich. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 4 to 10 Jesus himself for our sake became poor, that we through his poverty might be rich. 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9 
So according to these preachers, the words of Jesus and the words of Paul would not be credible, since on earth they were not as rich as Solomon was, for instance, yet all their books on prosperity are full of the words of Jesus and of Paul. My friends, our earthly possessions do not commend us to God. Paul was content with what he had on earth. His priorities were elsewhere. Jesus was also content with what he had. His priorities were elsewhere. To save the world, heal the sick, cast out devils, cleanse the lepers and raise the dead, destroy the works of the devil. God is not pleased when we push lean sheep because we are more powerful. Onesimus was once a slave of Philemon. Philemon won. He fled from him and became born again in Rome. He was the one now at the right hand of Paul when Paul was in prison in Rome. So Paul was now sending him to the churches. In the early churches, rich people were converted, prominent people in the society were converted, as well as slave owners and slaves. Paul sent the slave Onesimus as a messenger to the churches. Paul said to the churches, Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, with Tychicus, a beloved brother, and a faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord, they shall make known unto you all things which are done here. Colossians 4, verse 7 to 9. The churches heard the gospel by the mouth of Onesimus, the slave, and they believed it. Whenever we start having favoritism in the church, God is not happy at all. James says in James 2, verse 1 to 6, My brethren and sisters, do not hold the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect of persons, whether they are fat sheep or lean sheep or partiality. For if there come into your assembly a man with a gold ring, ring of authority worn by Roman officials, in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and you have respect or pay attention to him who wears the gay clothing or fine clothing, and say unto him, You sit here in a good place, and say to the poor, You stand there, or sit here, under my footstool. Are you not then partial in yourselves, and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, has God not chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom, which he has promised to them that love him? But you have despised the poor, lean sheep. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats? It is the same salvation that the lean sheep and the fat sheep have received. We should treat them equally in church and not show partiality. 119. Follow the Shepherd. Ezekiel 34 verse 22 to 24. Therefore will I save my flock, and they shall no more be a prey, and I will judge between cattle and cattle. And I will set up one shepherd over them, and he shall feed them. Even my servant David, he shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, a prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken it. We have studied succinctly what God did not like in the shepherds he placed over his people, and what the ideal shepherding God wants over his people is. No shepherd on earth, by his own power, can offer you that ideal shepherding, for one must lay down his life for the sheep, decrease, so that Jesus, the chief shepherd, may increase in him. John 3 verse 30 Jesus has made each one of us a shepherd of his flock, overseer of his flock. 1 Peter 5 verse 2 to 4 Let us all learn from Jesus, the chief shepherd, that we may all grow up into him, not just in him, but into him, meaning we must become like him. Ephesians 4 verse 15 Jesus Christ is the shepherd of the sheep because he laid down his life for us so that we can become the sheep of his pasture. Him we follow. He said, follow me. Matthew 9 verse 9. He will never lead us into a ditch. 
God has seen the kind of shepherds we had over us and was not pleased with some of their ways. Therefore he decided to send his son Jesus as one shepherd over all his sheep. So there is only one fold. You do not have to worry which shepherd should I follow, in which fold should I be. Follow Jesus and be in his fold. God prophetically said, Even David, my servant, he shall feed them, and he shall be their shepherd. He is not talking about David. What God is saying, the one shepherd who will be over his sheep will be a man after his own heart, a shepherd like David who will be willing to fight the lions and the bears that come against the sheep, even to the death. Furthermore, David means beloved, and God said about Jesus, He is the son of David. He said of Jesus, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Mark 1 verse 11 And I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David, by which he means his beloved son Jesus, the son of David, a prince among them, I, the Lord, have spoken it. Ezekiel 34 verse 24 If we follow Jesus our shepherd, we will make it in our Christian journey. Let us look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Hebrews 12 verse 2 Even if human shepherds disappoint us, let us take him as an example of shepherding, for he has given us an example that we should do as he has done to us. John 13 verse 15 He does not mean that we should die for the world, no, he did it already, but in all other aspects we should follow him. Jesus said, If anyone wants to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Matthew 16 verse 24 Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. 119. The shepherd takes care of wandering sheep. Deuteronomy 22, verse 1 to 4 You shall not see your brother's ox or his sheep go astray and hide yourself from them. You shall surely bring them again to your brother. And if your brother is not near you, or if you do not know him, then you shall bring it into your own house, and it shall be with you until your brother seeks after it, and you shall give it back to him again. In the same way you shall do with his ass, and so shall you do with his clothing. And with any lost thing of your brother's, which he has lost and you have found, you shall do the same. You may not hide yourself. You shall not see your brother's ass or his ox fall down by the way, and hide yourself from them. You shall surely help him to lift it up again. This aspect of shepherding, I learned it the hard way, and it had broken my heart at times because I got attached to the wandering sheep. And at times when I saw them wandering into my fold, I prayed, God, can they not wander into someone else's fold? Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But he who is a hireling, and not the shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. The hireling flees because he is a hireling, and does not care for the sheep. John 10 verse 11 to 13 The rendering of the French Louis II Bible for the word hireling of John 10 is mercenary, one who is hired a soldier that is hired into foreign service, a hireling. When you are truly a shepherd, you cannot have the heart of a mercenary. The mercenary does not truly care about the lives of the people of that kingdom, for he is foreign to that kingdom. He is just there for the money he is getting. But you and I, we have the heart of the shepherd, because Christ Jesus, the true and good shepherd, dwells in us. We are not mercenaries or hirelings. We are not there for the people's money. 
When you have a heart of a shepherd, you want to help any sheep, whether they are of your fold or of someone else's. That is how God intended it to be. It is one and the same kingdom of God. People come to you because they want healing, deliverance from demonic possession and oppression, deliverance from debts, deliverance from immigration trouble, etc. They come to you because they have heard that God performs all kinds of miracles through you. Some of them have no intention of becoming disciples of Jesus Christ. They just want to be converts. The latter have already planned that the moment they get their miracles, they will leave you and return to their previous fold. God will test your heart whether you act according to the scriptures or according to your emotions. Being Christians does not take away our emotions, but we surrender them unto our Lord Jesus, the Good Shepherd. He knows how to heal our brokenheartedness. Luke 4 verse 18 Moses tells us, You shall not see your brother's ass or his ox or his sheep fall down by the way and hide yourself from them. You shall surely help him to lift it up again. You shall bring it into your own house and it shall be with you. Deuteronomy 22 verse 1 to 4 And since they are in your fold, you should treat them the same way you treat your own sheep. For God, the Good Shepherd, shows no partiality. Acts 10 verse 34 You will pray for them and fast for them, and sometimes they come in such a bad shape that you will have to pray and fast more for their deliverance than for that of your own sheep. And some of them, the moment they get their deliverance, they will just tell you, I am going back to my old fold. I used to be broken hearted and at times I still am, for I got attached to the sheep and thought they would become disciples after Jesus Christ had delivered them. I always explain to them, the purpose of you becoming a disciple is so that since God delivered you from your own problem, he now wants to teach you how you also can go and help someone else not just being the one that is helped all the time. But they are too selfish and only think about themselves. They have received their deliverance. Why should they care about being trained to help other people who are in the same situation they used to be? If all of us had been that selfish, first Jesus Christ would not have come to die for such an ungrateful world and nobody would have prayed for you or taught you the word of God. Christianity is not self-centeredness, but rather selflessness. John says, By this we have known the love of God, because Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. 1 John 3 verse 16 Choose to become a disciple of Jesus Christ, for God also wants to use you to help others. Do not be the one who is eternally being helped. Do not be offended when people leave you for their old fold after they have received their miracles. I know it hurts because you feel like you have been used and abused. I have been there. It is just a taste of what Jesus Christ feels, for he is looking for disciples, but some Christians only come to him for what they can get, and the moment they have what they want, they stop fellowshipping with him. He will only see them again when they are in trouble again. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession, for we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted just as we are, yet without sin. Therefore let us come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may attain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hebrews 4 verse 14 to 16 Jesus knows exactly what you and I are going through. In John 6 he had performed many miracles for them, healings, food multiplication, yet when he wanted to teach them in depth, many left him. He was only left with twelve disciples, and yet one of them was a devil, even Judas Iscariot. God will give you real disciples who will want to be trained, so that they will be used by God. 
If the body of Christ was walking in unity and not in competition and envy, we could willingly send our sheep to another shepherd's fold to receive a particular diet which is not available in abundance in our pasture. What do I mean? If you are not an evangelist, you can send your sheep to a scripturally sound evangelist who will train your sheep on soul winning. If you are not a prophet, you can send your sheep to a scripturally sound prophet to learn on how to prophesy. You do likewise for other ministerial gifts in the fivefold ministry gifts. If you are not having great results in healing, deliverance, debt cancellation, you can send your sheep to a scripturally sound born-again Christian who is having better results in healing, deliverance and debt cancellation, and they will return your sheep back to you according to Deuteronomy 22, 1-4. We are building the same kingdom of God, and there is no need to fight over the sheep. Jesus says, No one can come to me unless the Father who has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. John 6 verse 44 The same goes for you and me. God will send us our sheep. After all, they are his sheep. He just entrusts them to our care. If you act according to the scriptures, God will give you a sphere of influence and your sheep will be your disciples. You might be just teacher to others, but to those whom God will draw you to, you will be a disciple. They imitate you as you imitate Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1 Paul says, For though you have ten thousand instructors in Christ, yet you do not have many fathers, for I have begotten you in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Therefore I beseech you, be imitators of me. 1 Corinthians 4 verse 15 to 16 Now may the God of peace, who brought again our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Hebrews 13 verse 20 to 21 Brothers and sisters, remember me in your prayers, as I also remember everybody who reads these my weekly milk Bible studies in my prayers and fasting. Regards, G.